Time for the body shop. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part two of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzerkampfwagen 2 in US capture markings. <clears throat> As I mentioned in part one, I'm going to be doing the Tamiya Panzerkampfwagen 2 in US capture markings. So the first thing I need to do is I need to start doing some plastic removal off of parts to make way for the photo etch and to take care of some of the incorrect details for the version that I'm building. So in looking at the photo etch instructions, the first thing it shows the first thing it shows here is this uh, mount for the spare tracks that I'm not going to mess with right now because there's nothing nothing to actually remove on the kit part. There's some indentations where the parts go, but those don't get changed. So that stays the same. A, which is the jack, shows that I need to cut this detail off of the jack to be replaced with photo etch parts. Same with B, which is the sledgehammer. However, in the reference photos I have, like this here, those details are not present. The jack is not here, the sledgehammer is not here, and the only, the only thing I can see here, there's a steel cable that runs along the front, and kind of weird looking, but the only hardware is one photo etch clamp which looks like it would be the clamp for judging by the size of it and the location uh, probably Looks like this clamp right here, well, it's out on the edge, so I'm thinking it's, it's the clamp for this right here, just in the open position. So those two things, I'm not gonna have to mess with. Now I think I'm gonna put the, cause you can't see really good on the reference photo, but it doesn't look like even this is on there. But, I think I am going to put the hardware on there, but I'm not going to put the jack or the sledgehammer. So those two things there, I don't need to mess with. The next part is going to be removing all of the detail on the fenders, including this simulated tread pattern here. These bolts, this hardware, the ax, I don't know why they do that. Uh, these two items here, this bar here. So basically, everything on here is going to be removed. Both sides. And then the photo edge parts will go on top of that. Also, where the spare wheel goes, again, that does not look to be a part of the actual vehicle itself that detail is missing so what I'm gonna have to do is I'll be putting the photo edge parts in place but no spare wheel so these indentations here and here are gonna have to be filled in so I'm going to have to fill that in with something, either putty or cut some uh, plastic stock uh, about that size, glue it in there, and then fill in the rest with some putty and sand it smooth. And then just put the hardware only from the photo etch set. Then we've got more of this stuff. We've got a shovel. Again, I, the, the tools don't seem to be in place. So basically what it boils down to is I need to go through each step and start removing detail according to what shows on my reference photos. So I'm gonna start with this stuff here 
and remove all of the detail on both these fenders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my cutter here and remove the majority of the detail with or what I can at least with these cutters. Okay, so what I'm doing now in order to remove material a little quicker since it doesn't have to be real smooth, you know, in the center part, just mostly smooth, but I need it really nice and smooth on the edges. Uh, I'm using this Dremel Micro cordless tool with a, um, I think it's called a burr. I've got a couple of different sizes here. I'm going to use this one to get the majority of the stuff off, and then I'll use this one to get a little bit closer. And then I have a real pointy one that should allow me to get up close to the edges. Yeah, right there. Should allow me to get up close to the edges so it's all nice and smooth for the photo etch. So just a quick demonstration here. Turn it down just a little bit. All the way to the edge I'm just getting close but not quite but like I said I want that to be real smooth and flat for the photo etch this flush and then to kind of see how well it turned out I'm gonna put some to me extra thin on here to smooth it all out kind of cut down on the dust and that way I can get a better idea of how it looks now, keep in mind it looks rough in the middle but <clears throat> that's not the part that needs to the surface detail just needs to be gone somewhat uniform it's the edges that are the most critical. So I'll let that dry a little bit and then maybe I'll cut the part off and see how it fits. Alright, so there's that. So you've seen how I do that, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and uh, the same thing here, here, and here. Okay, this stuff's ready to go, hopefully, for the uh, photo etch. I need to remove this box here, because according to the reference photo, there is no box back there. It's a looks like an angle iron or something rack, probably for jerry cans uh, back here, and which brings the point or brings to uh, another point is it's important to reference your photos because according to this. Photo etch, photo etch instruction sheet, I'm supposed to remove this box. However, it is still intact on this particular vehicle, so that would be a horrible mistake to make because it would pretty much mean doing some crazy scratch building or something like that, or getting another kit. So pay attention to references. So anyway, I need to remove that and I'm going to use this exacto saw here and uh, basically just cut along this fender and I'm going to cut it only to here and then I'm going to have to remove this part up here somehow without destroying the top of the engine deck so I'm going to work on that a little bit and then uh, we'll come back okay I've got the top cut off <clears throat> 
So now I'm going to use my handy cutters here and cut this part off. of the part that's already been cut through. Like that. Now the fender material will uh, cover this up, so we should be good. So now all I need to do is just cut that and this off. Now here's something that's kind of nice. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about this detail or these bolts or anything because that gets removed. That there gets removed. And replaced. with a photo etch part so that and that so all that surface detail the bolts i should probably try and save but i'm not too worried about it but this one for sure can come off because this replaces it so that's kind of nice okay so here's where it sits i've got that box removed now i had to remove a little wedge that was here that was left over from the box and uh, now I need to remove a bit of this right here because of <clears throat> the bit of fender that's going to be there <clears throat> uh, let's see so basically it has to line up with this edge right here. So this, I need to use a straight edge or something. Start scoring that until I get it to the point where I can cut it. So I'm going to need to measure it and mark it and get it cut off. So sorry I'm not able to show all of this stuff that I'm doing on camera, but it's just too awkward with uh, having to move this around so much. And it's, it would be out of frame quite a bit. So I'll just have to explain it as I go. So I'll be back in a minute. So what I did to make my straight line is I used this piece here, which is supposed to be on that side. I used it here and I used it. I got it to the correct width lined up with the outside edge of the fender. And then very carefully and slowly using the back edge of an X-Acto blade, I score it and score it until I had a nice score line there. So now I can just uh, continue scoring through it until I get it chopped down to the level I need. And you end up with this. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'll probably do is I'm going to have to put something behind here. To make sure it's fully closed up because you can see a little bit of a little bit of daylight through there but shouldn't be too much especially since i'm gonna be putting that that rack on there so that will be good so that part's done so now i can move on to checking some of the other details that need to be removed. All right, the next details that I need to remove are these lifting hooks right here. Actually, I need to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So basically, utilize the same techniques. I'll cut it off first with my cutter. All right, before I get too much into cutting more of the stuff, I've got those lifting hooks cut off, but I want to fill these in. And the way I'm doing that to fill the majority of the 
opening. I'm using this styrene here, evergreen styrene, and I'm not sure what thickness it is. I should have written it on there long ago, but I didn't. So I'm basically just cutting out little pieces like this and cutting them to length like this. And then this looks like it's too wide maybe. It's a little bit too long. And this way it'll take less filler to fill it in. Just a little bit too wide. Ta-da. And this is pretty flat so it's not going to take a whole lot of extra effort and then i'll use some tamiya extra thin like that make sure i let it cure up really well before i try and sand it <clears throat> It, voila! Make sure it's pressed down. Like that. Now I can let it dry and I'll be able to sand it. But in the meantime, I can move on to the next, the next parts I need to clean off. So I need to get this whole grill off. And for that, I am going to use I think I'll tape it on here again and use this uh, chisel blade. Okay, <clears throat> I got these taken care of, got that taken care of. So real quick like, I am going to take my black super glue and I am going to start filling these in. I'm going to try and use this super glue as filler. I hear people talking about it all the time. I don't remember if I've ever tried it, but I've heard that this black super glue works pretty good. For a filler so that's what I'm gonna try so there we go and I'll have to let that dry really well and then once it does I can try shaving it and sanding it off so there's that so let's see where am I so I got that stuff cut off um, this right here, this grill here, and this grill here needs to be cut out. So I'm going to use my cutter here and I'll cut this grill out. <clears throat> and then once I get it out, I'll use a sanding stick to get it all nice and flat all the way around. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of work to do to use this photo etch set. Now, could you get away without getting rid of that? Yeah, you could, but it might be visible underneath the photo etch part and it might look goofy. So this isn't that hard. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but in the end, it will be worth it. All right, in the next step of this, uh, 
Um, it shows kit part 23, which I'm assuming is the jack block. It's a, no, that might be like, that looks more like a box of some kind. But, yeah, it is a box. First aid kit, who knows? But it's showing to remove that detail off of it, put a handle on either side, and then these straps here. I really can't tell. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a box of some kind. Okay, and then these straps go on it. And this bracket. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, in the reference photo, there is a difference. Now, these parts still get used, but you can see the bracket here, but the, the box is laying on the back of the fender. So it would be like over here, it looks like, or maybe on, yeah, looks like it's on the fender back here. So I'll have to remember that. And uh, make sure I put the brackets on right. So what I can do is I can go ahead and get this stuff cleaned off of this block. And it will be ready to go for these. They look like metal reinforcing straps or something. Not really sure. Um, I need to see if I can find another photo that looks a little better. So I'm going to cut part number 23 off. And what I'm going to do is I'll cut it off, get it cleaned up and everything. Then I'll put it in my parts box, uh, awaiting final assembly or whatever. Because I always keep one of those handy so I don't lose parts. So I need to cut these pins off the bottom. I'm also going to have to show you how I'm going to deal with those pinholes there. So it looks like this is sitting on the back, maybe. Oops. So I got it all cleaned up. So now, use some, to me, extra thin to kind of clean up those edges there. Throw that in the parts box. So we got that. So what do we got next? Okay, I got all that cleaned off. Um, okay, so it shows cutting this box off. I think I mentioned this earlier. It showed cutting that box off, but for this, for this vehicle, it does not get cut off. However, in looking at... photos that is another storage bin of some type you can see it's got latches and everything on it so fortunately by cutting this one off here I'm gonna have extra latches so I'll be able to put them on here but I'm gonna have to do something to make it look like uh, it's got a lid on it so I need to do a couple of things here I need to cut these straps or whatever they're supposed to be from around that and then I need to trim all of this hardware off of that box so I'm gonna use the same same techniques I've been using I'm gonna use my cutter first and then use a combination of this this these and get it all smoothed out. So starting with this one, I'll just cut that off like that. That one there. That there I'll have to use the this. 
and then this is small enough I can probably just use this like that and then sand it smooth So I'm going to continue working on those things. We'll come back and take a look. Okay, while I'm working on this box, and here's what I've decided I'm going to do. On this box here, I've got it all sanded smooth and it's ready to go. What I'm going to do to simulate the lid, because with the lid, actually with the lid, it's a little bit taller than this, but I don't know if I'm going to actually do that. <clears throat> but... It does need to be, um, I'm gonna do a lid on it, so I'm going to fabricate a lid out of styrene. And, uh, and it'll probably just be a thick piece of styrene that's squared off and looks decent and cut to the same size as this, or really close, maybe a little tiny bit larger, and uh, glue that on top, and then I can put the hardware on there. But one thing I like to do, especially on these older kits, is, I like to um, take a panel line scriber and I like to scribe around the edges of molded on hatches, lids, whatever. And the reason I like doing that, it kind of takes away that molded together look, especially when you get into paint. And then uh, like pin washes and stuff it really makes it really makes it look like it's a part that's actually set on top there not just something that's molded together so um, is it necessary probably not but I like to do it just for that extra little bit and this is a scriber I can't remember what brand it is so sorry but just scratch it like that and that way it gives a little bit of an undercut so it looks like it's really a hatch so I'm gonna do that here and I'm gonna do it on this one I may even work these a little bit more but I'm not sure yet but that helps a lot with that so I'm gonna do those real quick and then I can move on to the next part, which is kit part 22, the box. I'll cut that off the sprue and uh, we'll take a look at that and see what needs to be removed. Okay, this box has been stripped of detail and is ready for um, the photo etch. So now I can move on to the next part, which is the turret. So on the turret top, let me get this cut off. I've these two lifting hooks here have to be removed. So same old, same old. Just chop them off. Use the chisel blade here I keep calling it a chisel blade I'm not sure if that's what it's called but that's what I'm using it for a chisel sand it a little bit make sure it's Smoothish. Okay, so that's ready for photo etch parts. And then the turret bin, which are parts 16 and 17. We need to remove the detail there and there.
I'm going to give this a pretty good sand because the top of this, because of the molding process, the old school molding method, um, it kind of flares out and I want to get that fixed so you can see how it's not, not flat. Okay, so with the cleanup of the turret and the turret bin, that pretty much finishes up all of the prep to start doing the modifications and the photo etch. So that is going to end part two. So next time in part three, when I come back, I'll get this stuff cleaned up here. Hopefully it'll be cured up by then because it's still kind of soft. So I can get that flattened out and uh, start doing some of the photo etch. If you liked this video and you want to see more of my builds and or other content, hit the subscribe button. I'll put a link at the end for uh, part one if you didn't get a chance to see that. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. I will see you all later.